In my previous video, I focused on how objects are constructs of the mind from one particular angle. I was looking at it from trying to explain how objects themselves aren't actually real. But you need to be very clear that you don't misunderstand what I'm saying there, because I am certainly not saying that reality as such and what's happening in it is imaginary, that it's all a dream or some silliness like that. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that objects are constructs of the minds. Objects only exist in here. Now, reality is as real as we can all agree on. But when it comes to objects, what an object actually is, is the manifestation of how we focus at what, for want of a better phrase, level of zoom we focus on reality and how that is expressed in our internal representation of the world and in our communications with other human beings. But the objects do not exist as such in reality they exist as concepts in the mind. And probably one of the easiest ways to understand why the objects are not actually really out there is to think about something like an animate object, a human being, for example, and observe how that human being has been growing and changing over life. So even while we would consider, for example, ourselves to have existed for several decades and we would attribute to ourselves a permanence and a continuity over those over that time span in reality if you look at the matter that makes up us as people as bodies that matter has been recycled and tends to get recycled so that every molecule in your body gets replaced on average about once every seven years i believe the statistics are so how could i the person you see here before in front of you and who is now recording this video how can i be the same person i was seven years ago and still i think about myself as such i have memories of me when i was 30 years old when i was 20 years old when i was 10 years old so the object of my body is not actually real it's a mental construct now some of you might then argue and say well okay maybe we'll grant you that but there are objects with greater permanence such as rocks for example where the molecules don't really get recycled at all but rocks weather rocks change as well and you know, if one molecule is shaved off a rock, is it not the same rock anymore? Or when you pick up a rock and you hold it in your hand and you put it back down again, that's one rock you've picked up and put down again. But as you've did so, you will have removed one or two atoms of that rock. Is it now not the same rock anymore? Of course it is, because we don't look at the rock at that level of magnification we don't consider an object at that level of detail and if you then think well let's then redefine what an object is as specifically the totality of all the atoms that it's made out of all the elementary particles that make of up the atom now we have gone down to a level of magnification where first of all you cannot recognize anything as anything anymore because if you look at a rock at the level of magnification where you're looking at individual electrons protons and quarks you will not be able to tell that you're looking at a rock anymore see what i mean so in that sense objects do not actually exist objects are constructs of the mind and when we get down to elementary particles, then of course we get into the whole quantum thing where nothing is permanent anymore, where nothing is certain anymore, 
where everything is uncertain and nothing can be said with any specific level of accuracy. Nothing is permanent in quantum world. No particles exist forever. They go in and out of existence and change into energy and change back into particles and who knows whatever else. Virtual particles, look at them. So that was in very short what my first video was about. The other aspect in which we can say that objects do not exist independent of us is of a much less philosophical nature. It's of a practical, physical, even I would say scientific nature. The thing is, as you are aware of any object, the only way you can be aware of any object, the only way you can know of the existence of any object, the only way you can interact with any object is by definition of how reality works by exchanging photons with it. Everything you do is an exchange of photons. Even hearing is an exchange of photons because ultimately when you go down to the atomic level what is going on as the atoms hit your eardrum is that they are exchanging photons with the electrons and the atoms in your eardrum are exchanging photons with the electrons and uh, atoms in the air and as such impart energies from one to the other. Every awareness is an exchange of photons. As such, everything that is in any way interacting with anything else is both changing that other thing and being changed by that other thing. So nothing can exist independent of us because if it was independent of us we wouldn't have been interacting with it, we could never possibly have been aware of its existence and as a result it would have been different from what it is now, both it and we would have been different from what it is now after we have become aware of its existence. And that is another understanding about the nature of reality that an awful lot of people seem to lack. It is impossible to make an objective statement about anything in reality. You can make statements that are practically, for all intents and purposes, objective. If I pick up a one kilogram rock and I hold it in my hand and I let go, I can calculate with any level of precision of accuracy that I would care about at what speed, how fast it would hit the ground and how much energy it would impart on the ground. But at a fundamental level you can't do that. At a fundamental level there is no absolute certainty, there is no absolute objectivity possible because as I said every awareness about anything within reality involves an exchange of photons, it involves an influence that goes both ways between the observer and whatever it is they are observing. Both the observer and the observed thing are changed by the interaction in some infinitesimal way. And that is how nothing can exist independent of us. Because for an order, in order for it to exist independent of us, we should not be able to interact with it at all. And that would place either it or us out of reality. And that can't ever be the case.